We are live. Welcome to lunchtime, everyone. Today is going to be so much fun. It's so good to see all of you here. And you know what? We are going to take the time today and I'm going to show you my holiday buffet set up, the general buffet. And remember I told you the other day that we're going to go through all the little tips and tricks. We're going to um, talk about some of the tricks and tips that you do as well. And uh, I'm also going to show the buffet. Everything is laid out behind the camera so that you can see it. So I ran over here so that... Um, you wouldn't be able to see it just yet because I do want to take the time to talk about our buffet. You know, when you're hosting, when you're hosting or when you're helping someone, I mean, we have, I have a group of ladies that very often the three or four of us will go together and we will host a grand buffet for the family at one of the houses and we alternate houses. And when we do that, it is so much fun. So the funny thing is, is that typically I end up the one setting up the buffet, but that's okay because that's what I like to do. So that's what we're going to get into today. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to give you five big tips. I'm going to talk about each of those tips and then we're going to take the time to actually look at them in place and we'll talk about why I did what well, what I did and why we're doing that. We're going to talk about the things that we need if we're going to set up a buffet. Some things are optional, but some things are kind of critical to have. Now you may have your own design, your own uh, look. We're going to talk about the option of having China versus paper, cloth versus paper, all of those things. But you know, the bottom line of it is, is that you want your buffet to be smooth. You want to enjoy the festivities of whatever the holiday may be. So if it's Christmas, if it's Thanksgiving, it is certainly a time where you're doing a lot of cooking and all those things are fun. But understand at the end of the day, you do not want to be the one that they have to carry up to the bedroom because you're so exhausted. You want to be able to set things up so that you can enjoy the day as well. And that's what we're going to plan to do because, you know, it's all about the plan. Now, good morning. Good morning. All right. First, we want to make sure that we set up a starting point. We do not want people coming in your kitchen all willy-nilly all over the place and they're just kind of grabbing and going from wherever it is. You want to, what we typically do is to, we say the, the grace, the Thanksgiving grace, if it's Thanksgiving or whatever it is, we always have a grace. And typically the, the host husband does the grace, but if the pastor's here, then the pastor gets to do the grace because sometimes he is. So it's just whomever is a designated person. Sometimes we'll even select one of the children to do the grace because that's pretty special to them. Now I'm sitting at the children's table and let's see if I can do this and not, I'm trying to, I move, you know, we're always moving things inside of our house. So for the kids table for Thanksgiving, they're going to have the tier tray as their centerpiece because everything that's on this tier tray is child oriented that they can play with. Now, my idea is that, you know, sometimes the kids kind of get tired and wiggly. So in place of this for the holiday, we're going to, we're going to have a whole gingerbread set up, gingerbread house set up so that they can work on the gingerbread house. And it will be on a tray so that when we need to move the tray, we can do that. And once dinner for them is over, the tray can come back and they can finish up what they're doing. So I'll make sure they have all of that and ready to go. Now, tip number two is that you need a traffic flow. 
And the reason for that is what I was talking about. When you have people just coming in and they're just all over the place, you kind of want to flow. Now, depending upon the size of your kitchen, and, you know, sometimes small kitchens are almost better than larger kitchens because in larger kitchens, people do have a tendency to just start taking off in all directions. And um, I leave, I do not put place cards down at the main tables. I give everyone a room. The guys are in the family room. And they, their table is set up and they can watch the football game or whatever it is that's on that particular day that they want to watch. The ladies are typically in the dining room. So it's more lady type stuff in there. The, of course, the kiddos are usually in here. And if I have more, need more space, I can certainly expand from there. Now, so determine your traffic flow. Do you want to set up your buffet in a way that people can serve themselves? They can start on one side of your island and then go around to the other side of the island and continue around the, the room. And that's kind of what I've set up today so that we have a starting point. They'll go to that starting point and move gradually through to where I want them to, where I'd like for them to end up. And I purposely put things in certain places because there's things that you don't want to carry you know, as you're trying to serve yourself your food. So those are the kind of things that we're going to be taking a look at. Number three, use stations. Stations. Have a place for your drinks. Have a place for your main food. Have a place for your silverware and uh, cutlery items and napkins and those kind of things. Have a designated place. I have a designated place for the appetizers because I'm asking folks to come early. So they'll get to nibble on a, on a couple of appetizers, nothing too filling, but something light. Especially my crew won't have had a full breakfast. They're going to have coffee, tea, hot chocolate, and a muffin. So needless to say, by 3 o'clock, they're going to be ready for something else to nibble on. So... There's a designated place. Now, as we're going to look around the bar, you're going to see that my coffee um, station is still where it is. And that's only because on the day of the holiday, I move it. I move it to another place. I have a designated table that I put here and I will move it over to that area because that will become the breakfast bar. It's more like a bookshelf, so to speak. So I've got the coffee on and beverages on top. Got the, the cupcake, I mean, the muffins and whatever snacks there may be for breakfast will be on there. So that takes care of that part. So I'll be able to move that out of the way. Now, we usually have multiple cooks. And the reason for multiple cooks, I do the big items, those things that I know, like turkey, ham, I do those. I usually do the cranberry sauce because traveling with cranberry sauce can be a little daunting. Uh, I usually have someone that I designate to do the greens, designate to do the green beans, designate to do the sweet potatoes. Everybody gets, gets a little something to put into the buffet, which is what makes it special. And they will have a place card to know exactly where that particular item is going to go. And that means even if they say, well, you know, I'm saying, OK, I got a spot for you. And do you want me to give you a, a, a dish for that? Let you use this dish. And if not, if they've already gotten it, shh, that's that's a good thing. You know, don't angst over anything because we want this to be a fun day so when they come in and they've got something just a little bit larger just shift things around and get it on 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 your buffet ready to go but those big ticket items i'm going to take care of gravy i will take care of and um 
beverages, uh, those single young men that are coming in, uh, they typically bring beverages. Now, I provide uh, like water, some type of water. It may have lemons and oranges and those kind of things in it with a few little cranberries in it just because I want it to look nice. And um, I will also have on the stove, I will have a huge pot of wassail. And the reason for that is because of the fact that um, that's a good place to put it. It can remain in a warm, nice warm place. No real spills. And if they do, then, you know, I can clean that up very easily. So, um, so those, those are items that we can take care of. Another thing to keep in mind, uh, tip number four is to make sure that you have a separate location for your drinks and for your desserts. Now, sometimes I put the desserts actually on the buffet in the dining room and then everyone can come through. Um, if we have a really large crowd, then I may not do that because the ladies are already in there and it, you know, you don't want people, you know, they're trying to eat. You may not want people standing over them trying to get to the dessert. And so it may be that we may not even serve dessert until all everyone has actually finished dinner and then the dessert start. Or if someone just has to have a piece of pie with their turkey, then you know what? They can do that too. But it will be in a designated place. Uh, tip number five, all of your silverware, uh, cutlery, those kinds of things, you want those items at the end of the buffet. People do not want to carry their napkins and forks and all of that and balance their plates at the same time. So because of that, um, you're going to put those items at the end of the buffet. As well as your, you'll see that the drinks are going to be toward the end. And the reason for that, drinks are also near the sink because in case there's a spill, you can quickly take care of it. Or if, you, if you're like us, we usually end up with a couple of large bays of ice. And um, rather, sometimes rather than using the cooler, we'll just use the sink. Make sure the sink is nice and clean. Put the bag of ice in there, get it opened up, and put a cup so people can scoop and go. Also, um, we're going to look at some of the items you might need. Now, I'm going to turn you around because you see I got everything here, but I want to make sure that I note some items before we actually start to get into the flow. Now, first of all, I'm going to bring you here and I kind of place things in a way they may not actually be there when I finish up with uh, the buffet itself. But let me turn you around. I think this will work. All right, plates. Plates should always be at the beginning. Now today, I'm just using my china because it's here. And uh, But when I have a large group coming for uh, dinner, we're going to use heavy duty, attractive paper plates. And, you know, if push comes to shove, I may put uh, chargers out where they can put the plate on the charger and go with it. But that's not a day that you want to spend washing dishes. So that's the reason. So I'm going to place the plates down here at the beginning. So I'm going to shift things to see. Yes, you can see. And this bowl is for salad. So it's a cold item. And I'm going to put it here toward the beginning so that you have your plates, we have our salad, and then we can start to get into those side dishes. But I also want you to check the fact that I've got things on this side of the island, and I also have island, have items that are on the other side of the island. I also have my platter here for the turkey that is large enough to be able to house 
both the ham and the turkey. And I placed place cards here so that you never know. Maybe uh, that particular day I may not feel well and um, I may need some assistance. So whomever's here, it's my daughter who may be here usually, who is going to assist, she will know where I'd like for things to go. So here I have my rectangular serving uh, dish that's here and it says sweet potatoes. That's where the sweet potatoes are going to go here. Now, these are placeholders because depending upon who does the sweet potatoes, we may certainly switch this out with their dish. Or I may say uh, to my daughter, okay, you may, you, why don't you do the sweet potatoes? And I'm going to hand her the dish and say, take this home, do the sweet potatoes in here. And then in that way, she can just leave the dish and I'll handle the cleanup of this particular dish. So we've got our salad, we've got our sweet potatoes, we've got our turkey and our ham. And I set this up with my Thanksgiving menu layout. So everything that's here is on the Thanksgiving menu that I emailed to quite a few of you. Now, notice, I've got multiple, I have multiple um, crock pots. And typically we have maybe two or three that are going. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when you're going to use more than one crock pot, you're probably going to need a power strip. And the reason for that, I've done this, so that's why I'm warning you. I will start plugging things in. I try not to use too many extension cords because what happens, you'll end up blowing a fuse and you have to go out to the garage, flick the switch, you know, and start shifting things around in the middle of your buffet. So I have gotten a little smarter in, in my younger days and I am um, using a power strip and I put the power strip somewhere in between where it is kind of sort of out of sight. And typically I will put it somewhere between and under this particular platter as a lip. And I'll bring you in closer so you can see that. But it has a nice lip to it. Hope I'm not shaking you too much. But it has a nice lip. And you can just put your power strip right under it. No one really pays that much attention to it. And so you'll have a place for our green beans. I'm sitting, I set that here so I wouldn't forget. You're also going to have a place for your tear because this is our flow. We started over here. We came down here. We're going to make that turn. They got the green beans right here. And when you're putting those out, be sure to put some type of serving utensil close. I also have a little saucer that's close that I can sit that serving piece right there next to that item. Now around the corner on this side, I have my place for the corn pudding and I'm placing that there so that as we're walking around and I'm going to bring you around just like we would do we're coming around so we are walking and we are now on the other side so let me bring you down just a tad so you can see all right we're right here at the corn pudding I don't know if that's a, is that a good position. Okay, we're here at the corn pudding. So we can dip our corn pudding. We have a saucer that's right there. So when they're not using that utensil, they can put it there. Now, we also have access to the meat tray from both sides. Now, what we usually do is that we 
slice the turkey completely. And most of the ham is sliced. So when you look at this tray, it's gonna be half ham, half turkey. We have dark meat and light meat of the turkey. We have pieces of ham over on the other side so that everyone can get to whichever part that they like the best. Now, if they're like me, I like a piece with a bone. I like the leg. So I usually leave one leg unsliced. And uh, so I can grab that and have it, but that's not usually on the platter, okay? That's the advantage of being the host, hostess, the hostess in the house. All right, so we're moving down this way. Here, we're gonna come to our sausage gravy. So either I will do the sausage gravy or I will designate someone to do that sausage gravy. And you can see I've got the little card ready for it so we know exactly where it's going. Now notice I've got some space in here because I have a couple of people who like to add something else. And so that allows me to be able to scoot things around. So should I need to add an additional platter or rectangular baking dish, whatever it is, I can do that and put it right in the spot. So I've got space on both sides. Now, behind the sausage dressing right here, I have a seven quart uh, crock pot. And this crock pot is for the collard greens because we want those collard greens to stay hot. Now I put the collard greens back in this area for a reason, because what's gonna happen is that I've got an electrical plug right here that I can easily plug that into. And that's typically where it goes. It goes right there, it plugs right in there. So that makes it nice and makes it convenient. Now, this is where you're gonna laugh. I know everyone has a gravy boat. And I have one too, but I like hot gravy. So because of that, I use my rice cooker to keep the gravy hot. So the gravy goes in this little removable pot. I'll put it on low, put it back in there, and our gravy is hot for the entire evening. And when everyone's finished eating, then I will just turn it off and it's ready to go. Now, this particular, I, I decided to use this because it cleans up so easy. And it's a non-stick surface. And all of these items I, I, I have down in the description box. So that if there's something that you see that you might want or, or like, you know where to go and get it, okay? So all that's already down there. Now we're gonna keep walking around the island. So we've gotten here, we're here at the sink. So let me bring you here. Okay, this is where, this is our beverage station. Now our beverage bar, our beverage station is one of those places where we can kind of have from soup to nuts. Like I said, I'm going to fix water to start with. And on the stove, I'm going to have a large pot of wassail that is always going, going to be served both at, both at Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'm going to always have that. Now, let me put that down for just a second. A tip, because the drinks that are going to be here, the ice is going to go in here because they're here. I usually use, you see these cups all the time. These are those red solo cups. Well, what we do, I keep a magic marker here for you to be able to put your name on your cup. Because when you have an extremely large crowd of a lot of people, then you're going to want to make sure that you know where your cup is. And you aren't going to want to have to buy enough cups for each person to have five or six cups. And I have smaller red cups 
for the kiddos to be able to use, and they can put their name on their cup as well. Now, for those additional beverages. Now, sometimes I have those who will bring libations. And uh, so those that's why we have space in this area for additional beverage. There's usually ginger ale. There's usually some type of Coke. There's usually um, uh, some type of sparkling water. There's usually wine. All of those things will go over in this area. And it's closed to the sink and will be closed to the ice so that they are able to get what they need. And actually, this is far enough out of the way that for those who are serving their plates, they can get their plates and still be able to handle the beverages because most of our people usually take care of that plate, zip on through, and uh, they put the plate down and then come back and get the beverage. And that's okay. That's okay if they do that. So we're going to continue around our circle. Now, I'm bringing you over on the other side of the kitchen. And this is that part of the kitchen that you see pretty frequently. I want to bring you in and get you there. Okay. Now, we have, I could not find, you all are going to laugh. I could not find my, my bread basket. And you know what? If I can't find the bread basket, then I will just use a nice bowl and just layer it with a good napkin. It's close to the oven. So when I take the warm bread out, I can put it in the oven. And uh, let me see if I can straighten you up just a little bit. Okay. I can put it in the oven and right there, it goes into its bread bowl or bread basket, whichever you want to call it. Now, next to that, I have butter because after all, all those good rolls, those good Parker House rolls, you're going to want some butter. So I've got the butter right there for you. Now, over here, this is where I have a tray set up. I have a tray that is set up there for our silverware. Now, the silverware is here. You can decide. Now, I can tell you, there are going to be some spots where you're going to see paper napkins. But for the main part of the dinner, I just like having cloth napkins because the girls like the cloth napkins. The fellas, they could care less. It's kind of like, oh, foo-foo. And uh, I have a cute little little starry, uh, Christmassy looking little uh, napkin ring that's on it with a little bit of bling because you know we like that bling. And uh, this is from Nat, um, Totally Dazzled, Totally Dazzled. And uh, so we've got our napkin. Now today I went with a neutral color napkin because I'm thinking Thanksgiving. But for Christmas, the napkin is going to be probably either red or red and white. And uh, we'll talk about that red and white next week. But anyway, so we, I digress. So we've got napkins here and we've got the silverware here. And, you know, guys, if you have more than six people, here's my suggestion go to paper and you know there is no reason why you can't have beautiful paper napkins now i got these i got the the dinner napkin and the i like to get the beverage napkins as well i use both i usually have both present so these are these are actually off, off of uh, Amazon. There were 50 to, a, let's see, no, it was 100 of the large dinner napkins, and it was 50 of the beverage napkins. So that number is going to work perfectly. 
And if you've got some extra, which I don't know about you, I do a lot, a lot of mixing sometimes. I went with this color. Isn't that really pretty? I went with this color because it picks up enough red that if I still have some leftover after Thanksgiving, I'm going to continue using them until they're gone. Now, before we leave today, I'll show you the ones that I got off Amazon for the holiday, and they really are quite pretty. So hold on one second. Let me put these back. All right, let's continue around the bar. Now here, I have, I have placed the place card for the hot beverage. Now our hot beverage in this case is gonna be the wassail. And I have those, uh, I found a Ross, those to-go cups. Is that not cute with that little candy cane look? Ah, I love it. And it has a lid so that it, those hot beverages can go in there. And we had quite a few of them. And you know what? It's not too early to pick them up because if you wait until closer to the holiday, the real good ones are going to be gone. So whatever matches your decor, then that's what you're going to use. And so this is what I picked up for the buffet. And I purposely laid a, a towel here. So just in case there's a little drip, I can take care of that. It's in there. And I've got my cups and I have the label. So that will be easy to get to. Now, let's come over here. In this area, this is usually my baking area. And ever since we did the kitchen, I made it the designated baking area. All right, so in the baking area, of course, we're gonna want those things that are good and sweet. I always do at least one dessert. And each family is responsible for bringing a dessert. And we typically try to check with each other to see what the other one's going to bring. Now, I'm spoiled. I always say to my daughter, you must bring a cake. And that's because she makes the best cakes and they are always so pretty. So I usually have a spot for that cake. Now, it may be that if, if the desserts overflow from here, I will use, let me go get it. I'm gonna have to go get it. I have it here. I will bring one of my TV trays over and just extend out right here so that we can continue with the dessert area. The desserts are over here by themselves. And if I need to extend a little more, because typically once dinner starts, no one's really going in and out. This is our garage door. No one's really going in any other garage door. And if necessary, I can actually pull this to the front and it's out of the way. So this makes it very convenient to have everything you need for the dessert. Now, also over here, I usually have plates. Now, I didn't put the plates there because I have the plates over here where you can't see at this moment, but I'm you, showing you China, but I promise you it will be paper, but it, they'll be pretty and they will match. Um, I will have little plates that will be over here for our big plates because everybody likes to take a little bit of everything. So I can tell you now, don't go with a small plate and a full-size plate, but it doesn't have to be as heavy as the plates you're going to use for dinner. So you can have those little cutesy plates, cutesy uh, little dinner-sized plates that you can put here at your dessert bar where everyone can sample a little bit of everything on the plate. Also here, I usually have plastic ware, plastic forks, plastic knives, and even a plastic spoon, just for the little ones mainly. And um, all of that will be right here 
at the dessert bar. Now, I'm going to bring you around because we got to the desserts. And I want you to see the early setup. Now, I'd like to invite my company about an hour or so early. Get you turned in the best spot. I'd like to invite about an hour early. And that way, we can chit chat, we can giggle, we can eat all kinds of fun things. This is the appetizer spot. So I have a little portable, um, can't think of the name, portable uh, table here that I use. And that's not what it's called. But anyway, that's what I'm calling it for the moment. But anyway, this is where I can put appetizers. And, and I have buddies who like to bring, like one likes to bring crab dip. She likes crab dip. Uh, another one likes to bring like uh, some type of shrimp something. And so, you know, we, we just about everybody in the family can handle seafood. Uh, I like to make my cucumber dip. So cucumber dip is always here. Um, it has a place. It's going to have plenty of room. This particular place, uh, just about, just about, quite a few of these items are thrifted. Now, this is a crystal plate, and you can see it has the little divisions. So I can do olives and pickles and uh, carrots and celery and cucumbers, sliced cucumbers, put a little bowl here with whatever the dip is going to be. It could be just a ranch dressing. And they can uh, certainly use this particular tray. This You always want a relish set up if you can. I also put, I have some other items we're going to talk about, but I also put some other place markers here for the appetizer. You never know what it might be. I love doing a um, a phyllo wrapped uh, brie with a delicious. Um, I use. Let's see what do I what all do I put on it? It's got caramel. It's got uh, a little bit of honey. It's got nuts. It's got fruit. It has all those things that are on top of it. You enclose it and then. Put it in the oven for a few minutes and let all of that start to melt. And when you cut into that phyllo, oh my goodness, it is so good. So those are the kind of things that I like putting on here that I can get out of the oven and have it right here ready. And it allows me to be able to kind of use the oven and turn it off so that, you know, the room is not so hot. I have another spot over here for another type of dessert, depending upon who's bringing. You know, sometimes people will bring an appetizer, and it may not be uh, in an attractive dish. Or they might want to use yours rather than theirs. That's okay with me. So I usually have extra vessels for whatever the circumstance may be. I usually go to uh, Ross. Or to uh, Whole Home Goods, or to Marshalls, and try to find lots of little cute serving items that you can put at those bowls and, and those plates. So this is one that I found just the other day, and it had let's see one two three. It had three six. It had six little Christmas tree serving items. Is that not cute? That came from Ross, and it was like $7.99 for the whole set. This will last forever, So, but it also gives me options when I'm serving. Now, like I said, I've got plates here, and because this is close to where the dessert bar is, I'll have plates here that will take care of both areas. And because at that point, the plates are going to be paper, I can put um, 50 to 100 plates 
right here. It won't take up a lot of space and people can just pick it up and go either way with it. So I'll show you how close they are. So you can see the area. So you can see where the, the appetizers are here, the desserts are over there, the plates are right here in the middle. So that gives us a nice spot to be able to look at. Now, I dropped a couple of things. As I, I didn't drop it, but I put them off to the side. And we're going to talk about those items as well. Now, I'll bring you back and we'll go through again for those who may not have caught it the first time. But uh, we'll stop and go through all of that. I want to see what everybody's saying. Oh, my goodness. You all have been talking a lot. There we go. Let's see if I can get down and get to see everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Halloween. Oh, Gina, thank you. Yay, Denise, you made it. I do do wassail. It is. We love wassail. And, and I even let it cool and freeze it. If I have a lot left and I'll freeze it and bring it back out for, say, Christmas, that'll be the first starting wassail and just add to it if I don't drink it all before the week's out. Let's see, Patricia said, you've never heard of wassail. Oh, yeah, wassail's delicious. Oh, and I'm so glad you're here. You're never, never too late. India Princess, hello, hello. Now, those little cards, those, let's talk about those little cards. Now, what I did was that I took the, the heavy cardboard that you can print and uh, just go on your computer. Let's see if I can turn you around and my camera won't do something crazy. Um, you can go on your computer, type up what you need, and where are my notes? I left my notes over there. Um, for those of you who sent me uh, emails and I shot you a couple of little uh, newsletters, this week's newsletter is going to be about our buffet setup. So I have included, and I know that because I've got it all here, I have included the titles for the place cards so that you'll have all of that. You won't have to think about it. And if so, of course, if you want to add some or tell me some that you want to add, I'll add those. And um, because even, even though I went through the, the little note card holder, that I have, I've had for a couple of years, but they are still on Amazon. And um, so, like I said, I placed those down in the description box. They were very, very reasonable. They were, uh, you get 12 to the set and I used all 12. And to be honest with you, um, it was the perfect number of place card settings. So, uh, you'll have all of that already for uh, what you're doing. Let's see. Um, there are some things you might want to think about. And these are things that I jotted down as I was setting up. Because for our new home cooks, these are things that when you're out thrifting, you might want to look for. Let's see if I can straighten you up. Well, I don't know why we're crooked today. Or at least I feel like we're crooked. There we go. Let's see if I can turn you just a little bit. Okay. All right. So some things you might want to thrift. Like I said, I showed you the platters that I thrifted. 
Um, you can certainly, you might even find when uh, during the summer, I walked into uh, the Goodwill and they had a hotel or something had closed back during COVID and they had tons of coffee makers and crock pots and teapots, electric teapots. And those are the kind of things that you might be able to walk up on, bam, and have it right there for a little or nothing. So those are some things that you might want to look for. Slow cookers. This is a real good time to pick up a reasonable slow cooker, a reasonable, reasonably priced uh, little rice cooker, or even the little mini crock pot. Sometimes you can find them as a, as a set, the little teeny crock pot. And it's another good item to have for gravy as well. I had one, but I broke the, the inside of it. I dropped it and uh, several years ago, but uh, I just didn't replace it because it came as a set with my main crock pot. So, you know, I'll, when, when opportunity comes, I'll get another one. Or if I find it at at a thrift store, then that will be when I pick it up. But for right now, I may not even look for it because that little rice cooker is working. We're working it. Um, some other things to think about. Okay, spam. Don't you love it? Um, some other things that when you are thrifting, look for cute little baskets that you can use for your bread, because you just bring them home, give them a good wash and, and, and sanitizing, let them dry well, use your napkin and put your rolls in it. Uh, oftentimes I will even, if I have, I have some long burger baskets that I use. I don't put food in them just because I don't want anything to happen to the basket, but what I do put in them are things like my silverware. I'll lay them in there. I lay the plastic ware. If I'm going to use plastic forks and knives and spoon, then they're going to go in there as well. So think about that. But long burgers you can find sometime at the Goodwill or at the thrift store. So keep your eye open. Ice buckets are always at the thrift store. That's a good thing to have. Um, attractive napkins. Now, I've got a couple of places that I usually find napkins. These that I had today in the last few sets that I purchased, I purchased from Amazon. And, I, and because I wanted a larger quantity and um, the price was good. And, you know, you have to really hunt because now is the time where you can get them and they're reduced. The price is reduced. You know, they're taking, taking say, up to 17 to 20% off the original price. Uh, sometimes you can walk into Ross or into Marshall's or into Home Goods and find exactly what you want. And sometimes you can. So that's when you have to go to Amazon or to wherever your favorite place is to order. And it may be, I don't, I don't know, not me, but it may be pure peer one that you might be able to find whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, I love peer one, but unless they have a really good sale on, they are typically just a little too pricey for me because I want people to feel comfortable using it. If you get something on one of these napkins, I'm not going to freak out because I know what I paid for it and I know it's reasonable. I can, I can afford to go and get another set. Okay. Now, remember, pick up your right now is the time to get your holiday napkins, plates, the uh, cups, especially if you have a particular colors that you want. If you think you might need trivets and you don't have trivets, you know, you might be able to find them at, at thrift stores. But if you're a little bit anal like me, you might want all the trivets to look alike. Well, trivets are not inexpensive necessarily, but you can find them occasionally on Amazon or even on Walmart.com. You might be able to find them. 
you might be able to find more than one at Home Goods that is kind of a matching set. I kind of like, I wanted, you know, in this case, I would have uh, a trivet under the sweet potatoes, all those things, those rectangular bowls, I'd have something underneath so that it doesn't affect the countertop. This is granite. I already know. Nothing's really going to affect it. But I usually put, I even put, if I don't have trivets available, I will put a heavy kitchen towel folded underneath and sit that dish on it. And uh, that just helps to protect the surface of your um, of your counter where you're working. And so, you know, this is one of those things that size, number of people, all of those things determine what you can really do and how far you can spread. Now, when I was in a smaller house, I put the dessert bar in the living room. I set up one of those long tables that you get at Costco, put a nice tablecloth on it, put some little decoration on it. And that was the dessert bar. And so people would go in there totally out of the way. It had plates, it had forks, it had everything. And they were able to go in there and have their and get their dessert and then come back to wherever it was that they were going. Now, that works. So everything does not have to be in the kitchen. I'm just showing you a starting point. But you do want that nice flow. Remember those tips. You need to have a designated starting point. You need to have a nice flow. Walk it yourself. Do your basic buffet. You don't have to have the platters out. You don't have to have the crock pots out yet. Um, you don't even have to have anything but your place cards and put your place cards where you want them to go and then walk it to see if it's a nice flow. So we have our starting point. We got a good traffic flow. We have a designate. We have designated stations for hot items, for beverages, for your dessert for your appetizer, for your bread, and all of those things are in designated places. You're also going to want a separate location for your drinks, preferably near your sink, so that you have a place for the ice. Now, one thing I didn't show you, and you may not have seen as we were moving around, but wherever you have something that is subject to drip, let's see if I can get you there, notice, I've got rugs. These are rugs that I can put in the washer. So should some of that wassail get on one of these rugs, not a problem. I will throw that straight into the washer and done. You know, should Coke get spilled, the rug will not only help to soak up whatever spilled, but you know, it takes care of that and it's quick and I can get rid of it. I also have a rug over here at the counter where the dishes are, where the actual serving dishes are. Now, collard greens have a tendency sometimes to have a little bit of a drip. And so because of that, if something drips, I've got a rug handy to be able to catch that so that it doesn't go on the floor as well as the dressing. If something spills, it's there to catch. So if you have, if not, um, I have even used for it over there by the drinks, I've even used um, a bath towel in that section when I didn't have nice rugs early on. You know, you if you're a young, new home cook, you may not have all of those things. So I'm just telling you, you know, use a bath towel, use whatever it is, fold it up so it's a little thicker, put it right across that area, and you have some protection for, for what you're doing. Now, let's see. Oh, the place cards, aren't they? They are nice. Thank you. Um, 
gravy in the cooker to keep it hot. Denise says that hers usually goes in the gravy boat and then it cools off. But put it in something that you know will keep that gravy going. Uh, the rice cooker, yes, I use it all the time. And yes, it's reusable, eyes wide open. Oh, thank you. Um, Sue said, is a cucumber dip available on your previous vlog? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Look back toward the summer, Sue, for the cucumber dip. Uh, we've got some folks coming in. I don't know how to. Uh, I think I can block that person. Okay, we took took them out. Oh, uh, thank you. Now. Keep this in mind. If you know you have someone who's trying to, to do this, we do this a lot. And, you know, when, when my daughter was just getting started as a homemaker, we would go in together and we would all, as um, moms, come in and we help get her going, get it started, get, suggest things, bring things. Um, she, she now has almost all of my Christmas platters because now she does Christmas. And so I pass the torch to her because now she can do it on her own. And uh, that's so exciting and that's a rewarding feeling. So if you know of someone who is uh, willing, whether it's your daughter, your daughter-in-law, and they are willing to certainly host whatever the event is, it doesn't have to be Thanksgiving and Christmas, it can be the 4th of July, and you have some platters or those kind of things that um, maybe you don't use all the time, this is a time to look at them and say, you know, you're going to be hosting such and such. Why don't you take these? And if you can use them, you can certainly ask them to you. And then if you don't need it, then can uh, give it back to me. And uh, that's just a good way, number one, to kind of get it out of your kitchen. But also, it gives them an opportunity to be able to have it. Most of the time, when I pass stuff like that, it's gone. You know, I let it stay where it is. And uh, it's so funny, the next time I come back to my daughter's house, she said, Mom, I, I got all of this stuff that you loaned me for Christmas. Don't you want it back? And I'm going, mm -mm, keep it for next Christmas. And so, uh, so she has all the Christmas platters. So when I'm having the Christmas function, I have to go to her house and bring the platters back. But, you know, that's the fun. That's, that's, that's what family does. We kick in with each other. We have even combined our dishes. When we wanted to have real dishes for dinner, we put both all of our dishes together. And because no one cares whether they all match, really. And uh, so we've combined them. It was more about having dishes than it was what the dishes look like. You know, guys, this has certainly been a lot of fun. And I have had a ball setting up over the, I, I started yesterday and I had my list. So it was like Santa. I was checking that list, trying to make sure I had everything. And you know what I forgot? I did forget one thing. Let me, let me go over here. I'm going to take you over. Uh, 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 uh. Hopefully you're not getting dizzy, but that's okay. I have this over here in the sink. These are aluminum pans. And I know most of you who have been homemakers for quite a while and home cooks for quite a while, you probably have some already. But what I like to do about this time of the year is to go uh, either, if not Amazon, go to Walmart or um, even if you have the best places, a re some type of restaurant store, there's a place called restaurant.com, I think it is, online, where you can get the, the 9 by 13 heavy-duty aluminum pans. And you can get 
a mass quantity. Now, I, I like them because when we're outside, then I can use the little burners to go underneath. They're just the right size. They fit in the trays. And um, what you can do is that, you know, this will fit inside of one of these rectangular dishes. So let me turn you around so you can see. Now I'm taking this, I want this to look nice where the sausage dressing is gonna be, but I cook the sausage dressing in something that I could dispose of. So I'm gonna take this, and you know how sometimes they tend to buckle? I'm gonna sit it right here inside of that dish. Looks, looks nice in this nice dish, but it is inside of something that's very secure. So that gives you an option of something that you can do with your, with your pans. Because typically, if you get these, and you know, Walmart carries these a lot during the holidays. Sometimes they're red, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're green. And, but to be honest with you, when you're trying to take this out of the oven and you have it full of say, macaroni and cheese and speaking of macaroni and cheese i i left that off my list but i know we're having macaroni and cheese but uh when you have a pan full of macaroni and cheese when you first take it out it's going to be wobbly so you usually have to put two together to give it a good feel when you bring it out and you're trying to get it over or you can take this dish over to the stove and put it right into that dish. And then you can bring it over and you feel comfortable carrying it. Or even putting them on a sheet pan helps to give them some substance underneath so that they don't feel like they're gonna wobble as you're carrying them. So I think, now I'm gonna read through what you've got here, just in case you have uh, some more ideas. Oh, Nitty T. Hello, hello. Oh, this is your first live. Well, I'm so glad you're here. We're glad to have you. Oh, Emma, your clocks went back. Yeah, we got that coming. Oh, I'm glad you're here anyway. Oh, thank you, Denise. Thank you, India Princess. Oh, Denise, you are too sweet. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Ronnie's funny. Ronnie said she, she thought a rice cooker was only for rice. Well, now you know. We make it work. Uh, Elizabeth said, I have a small home and have having people feel comfortable in my home is one of the most important things. You are absolutely right. And, you know, we haven't always had a larger um, house and uh, sometimes it was a little tight. And I tell you what, my mom and I lived in an apartment and she entertained all the time. There was nothing for her to have 10 or 12 people for dinner. And it was close. We were all but stepping over each other. But she set things up and everybody left feeling like family. And that's the main thing. You want your guests, when they leave, they feel like they are family. Now, they probably are, you know, especially at the holidays, you probably have a lot of family in. But if you have guests who are coming who maybe have never been to your house for a holiday, you want them to leave feeling warm, loved on, and certainly you want them full. And that's the main thing. You want their food to be good. You want them to be stuffed and you want them to be happy. Now, my last tip, my last tip is to ask everyone who comes to bring a vessel, one of those little Dollar Tree vessels where they can have some of the takeouts, a little takeout. 
And uh, the advantage of that is that there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're going to figure nobody's going to want to look at another day. And if that's the case, you may have a senior uh, who doesn't do a lot of cooking and you want to fix them a, a little a plate, then you can send a dollar twenty-five little plate to their house, home with them. And uh, sometimes uh, Dollar Tree has it in their foil, and they have that little top that goes on top. I would I'd show it to you, but I don't have one. I just happened to be in Dollar Tree the other day, and I thought about it, but this particular one didn't have it. But they do have those, and they have Rubbermaid items that you can use for little takeouts. And so uh, have them to bring a couple of takeout containers. And then that way you can share some of the leftovers with your guests as they leave. I, I love being able to do this. I'm so glad this was helpful. This is certainly, you're right, web restaurant store. That's it, Ronnie. Thank you. Uh, they do have a lot of items. And as I said, down in the description box, I have everything. Uh, card tables, yes, Denise, are great. Uh, small, I'm trying to read here without my glasses. Create those little small stations. They don't have to be this big. Whatever you need. Um, sometimes I use my, I, I used to use the stovetop and anything that was hot went over on the stovetop and then everything else was to the side because that's all I had in that kitchen. So that gives you an opportunity. You know, now it's kind of like I can spread things out, but it hasn't always been that way. So you're looking at the kitchen of someone who has been in the homemaking and home cooking business for over 46 years. So I've accumulated a lot. But if you're just getting started, start thrifting and looking for things that are on sale, that are reasonable. And you're not going to have everything, but you're going to do the best you can. The main thing is to have good food. And when the food is good, nobody cares about the rest, to be honest with you. So guys, lunchtime. We have been here and we're going to get fired because we've been here. We're over our lunchtime. And so we've got to uh, make sure that uh, we are with each other helping each other. And uh, if you did not get that little newsletter, shoot me an email and I'll make sure that you have it. And uh, I see that Deb said she's uh, taking notes and eating her lunch. She even got a little mini milk bone for the puppy. Oh, that's cute. Ah, God, what kind of puppy is he? Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> oh, actually, guys, shoot me an email. I'll send you the notes. I have them already typed up, ready to go. Um, your um, Joy is Joy Wilkins McMillan said that her daughter purchased the same blue aluminum pans and. Um, they were unusually sturdy, you know, sometimes they are, but um, the idea of sitting it in the, in the pan, absolutely. And it keeps you from having to scrub that dish. You know, sometimes that's the part that gets to you. Oh, thank you guys. Stephanie. Hello. I'm so glad you had a good time. Denise got her newsletter. Good, good, good. <laughs> she ate the milk bone by mistake. Well, that's okay. Oh, I'm so glad you've enjoyed it. Next week is going to be a fun week. And I'll do a quick 
talk about that next week. You know, I've got some of the holiday things already set up here in the kitchen. But next week, I'm going to be in my Mrs. Claus attire. And we're going to be ready to go because we have something we need to finish here in the kitchen. And I'm hoping we can do it in our lunchtime hour. So we're going to be doing a little decorating next week live right here during lunchtime. We're going to be chitting and chatting. We're going to be sipping on some cranberry juice. And uh, we're going to have a great time. Guys, God bless all of you. I am so looking forward to our next time of being together. I'm looking to get, I'm getting excited about Saturday. I'm going to be doing a couple of things that I think are going to be more holiday oriented that you will want to see. And uh, if I remember correctly, this time for our one plan one month for December. And I have a slamming, slamming plan for December. We're going to have some fun things in that December meal plan. So have a wonderful week. Enjoy each other. Share the love. And I'll see you soon right here in the kitchen of Ebony, Ivy, and Time. Mwah. Uh, India Princess, real quick, how do you sign up for a newsletter? Look in the description box. You'll see my email. Just send me an email and I will shoot it to you immediately. All right. See you soon. Bye.